guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing this all new 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE. And huge thanks to Joey and the rest of the management and staff here at Honda of Wesley Chapel for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below and I definitely suggest anybody looking for a new car in the Florida area to check these guys out and ask for Joey. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Ridgeline has been a part of Honda's lineup since 2006. That's when the first generation was released. Fast forward to 2014, Honda ended up discontinuing the Ridgeline for the first generation, but they brought it back for 2017. That's when this second generation was released. We have this Ridgeline RTLE. It's gonna be almost the top trim Honda Ridgeline. Starting with the Sport, it's gonna cost around 36,000 bucks. It's gonna be pretty well equipped. We're still gonna have the 280 horsepower V6 engine made it to a nine speed automatic transmission. And this V6 engine is going to have cylinder deactivation, so you can expect pretty good fuel economy for this pretty large mid-size unibody truck. Also for the Sport, you're going to have standard LED lighting as well as standard Honda sensing. So that's going to include your advanced safety features housed up front. You bump up to the RTL trim, you're going to have leather trim seats. You're also going to get uh, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Once you come up here to the RTL E trim, we're going to get parking sensors for the front and rear as well as LED daytime running lights up front. But as far as the exterior styling on this 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTL E, let's jump right in. So up front, as we mentioned, we're going to have LED daytime running lights for these LED headlights. We're going to have a black headlight housing turn signal on the outside with a high beam right here in the middle. I'm definitely liking this black headlight housing, especially contrasting this beautiful, beautiful red metallic paint. We have a chrome strip up top. I'm usually not a fan of chrome, but I think it contrasts this paint very well, especially with that daytime runner on the headlight. The grill is going to be completely blacked out. We have the Honda badge with the Honda sensing system right in the middle. It's going to be pretty large, more of that red metallic paint. Flat black for this bumper area. We have a, an additional turn signal right here. It's not going to be a fog light, but we do get a fog light right beneath. Uh, but as far as this opening area for the radiator, pretty large. I am liking this gloss black diffuser, but we'll take one more step back. You can take a look at the front styling one more time really liking those daytime running lights but as far as this wheel and tire setup let's take a step over here and check it out here we're gonna have our gunmetal gray 18 inch rims wrapped in 24560 r18 firestone destination all season tires pretty aggressive all season tire as you see we are gonna have a little bit of tread on the outside of the tire itself really helping the look and these 60 series sidewalls are gonna really help the ride quality on this ridge line uh, the plastic flat black bumper continues to the wheel well we're going to have the plastic cladding outside of it with a splash guard that's going to help when it comes to rock chips that bumper is going to continue or that plastic is going to continue for the rocker panels and it's going to continue for the rear wheel well as well but continue along again really love this metallic paint i hope you guys can pick up the metallic in this florida sun but here we have a chrome door handle smart access as far as the glass it's going to be very large we have an led um, turn signal on it as well. The black and red metallic contrast looks fantastic too. We're we are going to have blind spot monitoring, but it's going to be lit, lit up on the inside, not on the glass itself. The window trim is going to be all chrome for the bottom and the top part. The B pillar though is going to be blacked out. That is nice. We're going to get pretty dark tints for the rear. As far as the window sticker, you guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features. Of course, we're going to have the 2022 Ridgeline All Wheel Drive RTLE Radiant Red Metallic 2 color. The interior is going to be black. As far as standard technical features, we have the 280 horsepower 3.5 liter VTEC V6 with variable cylinder management, 9 speed auto transmission, IVTM4 all wheel drive system, heavy duty automatic transmission cooler, integrated closed frame with unibody construction, intelligent traction management, four wheel disc brakes, four wheel independent suspension, electronic power steering. You guys can pause, take a look at all the safety features. I'm not going to go through all those. Of course, this vehicle does get Honda sensing as well. In the interior, we're going to have leather trimmed interior, leather wrapped steering wheel, heated steering wheel, premium audio with eight speakers, display audio with Honda navigation, voice recognition, multi view rear camera, traffic and select areas, Honda Link, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, multi information display, steering wheel mounting controls. We're not going to go through all of those. You guys can pause, take a look at all those. It continues over here. Of course, we get a tilt and telescoping steering wheel column. It's not going to be power. It would be nice to get a power steering wheel column. Uh, for a $43,000 truck, but still not a big deal. In the exterior, we're gonna get these really nice 18 inch alloy wheels, power moonroof with tilt. Not quite sure why that's an exterior feature, but I guess I can see where they're going with that. 245 all season tires, blind spot information, cross traffic alert, LED headlights with auto high beams, front and rear parking sensors. That's what you're gonna be getting specific to your RTLE package. LED fog lights, dual action tailgate, seal reinforced composite, cargo bed, truck bed audio, 400 watt AC inverter, in bed trunk, heated power door mirrors with turn indicators, rear privacy glass, capless fuel filler, remote engine start, smart entry, all that. We're not going to have to go through all these features. You can pause. We also get 
collision mitigation, braking system, lane keeping assist, keeps you centered in your lane too, road departure mitigation as well. After all these features, it's gonna be coming standard on your 2022 Ridgeline all-wheel drive RTLE with a suggested price at 43,570. This gorgeous radiant red metallic is gonna run you an additional 400 after a $1,225 destination charge. Expect the total vehicle price to be sitting right over 45,000 bucks. We also get pretty decent fuel economy with the cylinder deactivation, 21 combined, 18 city, 24 highway. So not too bad, continuing along. We're not gonna get smart access for the rear, but wouldn't be really expected. Ton of chrome, we do get a ton of chrome for this window trim area. Uh, the gas tank's not gonna be pushed open, but I'll show you where the latch is inside. Additional splash guard behind your rear wheel too that does help the styling at least. And these tires, like I mentioned, we are gonna have a little bit of tread blocks outside of the tire, definitely helping if you get this vehicle in some mud or some wet conditions. But continuing out rear, we're gonna have our LED taillights with the reverse light right underneath. Ridgeline badging, shout out Wesley Chapel Honda. And our rear view camera right here next to the latch for tailgate, all wheel drive badge as well. Full parking sensing too, really nice. Uh, we got our trailer hitch right beneath. I'll put a little text box down, show you guys how much this vehicle is rated to tow. Dual exhaust too. I'll give you guys a couple revs right after we check out this tailgate. So pulling this latch, it's not gonna be damp, so be careful just slamming down your tailgate. We're also not gonna get a step, so it's gonna be a little bit tough getting inside. But we're gonna have this really nice drop-in bed liner. It's a pretty good material overall. We're gonna have tie downs on all four corners. We're gonna have two tie downs on all four corners, so it's gonna be eight total. The RTLE trim also comes with dual LED bed lights. And if you open up this little compartment right over here, it exposes a AC adapter. So that's also really nice to have in the bed of your Honda Ridgeline. But We'll take one step inside of this bed, show you guys the process. It's really not easy at all. You gotta kind of put a lot of effort into it, but it's definitely doable and hopping right back out, not too tough. We'll shut this thing back up. It's kind of heavy. Uh, again, it's not gonna be damped, but we'll take a step back, give you guys a couple revs and take a listen to this 3.5 liter V6. All right, guys, that was, of course, the sound of the three and a half liter VTEC V6 sold by Honda for this 2022 Ridgeline. And as soon as you figure out this latch, we can pop this hood up. We're not gonna get any struts, unfortunately, but I'll try to show you guys the process with this prop rod. And uh, here you have it. Here's a three and a half liter VTEC V6 making 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, getting about 21 combined miles per gallon. You can also expect this motor to get this 4,500 pound truck to 60 between seven and seven and a half seconds made it to this nine speed automatic transmission. So pretty quick truck overall. But what you see here is basically what you get. The air box is gonna to be towards the back of the intake. So pretty questionable location. However, it does seem like this thing does seem to suck in a little bit of cold air and feeds directly into your air box. So Honda definitely thought it through. But that, that's about it guys. We can shut this hood up. I'll try to show you the process with this prop rod without dropping the hood. But there we have it. Loving the daytime running lights too. Really helps accent the front end. But as far as the interior, we can take a step over here and get out of this wind and really check it out. So stepping in here, we're not gonna get dual pane windows like you get in the touring trims on both the Accord and the Pilot. But up top, we still get the soft touch materials with this plastic carbon fibrous trim beneath it. Pretty good resistance on the door handle, power seat, I mean, memory seats, great features, soft touch in this middle portion, stitch material right here for the armrest, power one touch for both front passengers, power windows for the rear, solid storage here, huge storage down here as well. You can easily fit a few sandwiches, fit small cups over here, a bunch of coins, gas tank release. Beneath that, we have additional storage too. Very, very good storage on this door panel. We have one out of our eight speakers. As far as the seats, here we have our perforated black leather seats with the white contrast stitching. Very soft headrests too. They're gonna to be heated, not cooled as far as the adjustments. We have lumbar control. You can recline the seats, drop them, lift them, slide the seats as well. We're not gonna get a Ridgeline nameplate on the frame itself, but the floor mats do say Ridgeline stepping inside though. We'll really check out this interior. And first thing we notice is the steering wheel. It's not gonna be thick, not gonna be thick at all, but I am liking the spokes how you can have position right here. So if you have your arm on the armrest, very comfortable position on the steering wheel. Same thing over here. We're not gonna get a true center console armrest, but how Honda does it with a lot of their vehicles, we do get one of these individual arm little pockets right here. So you put your arm on one of these, you can have a very comfortable position 
on the steering wheel. But the 9 and 3, it's not going to be the best. It does cave in pretty well for your fingers, but since we're not going to have a big 10 and 2 bolstering notch on either end of the steering wheel, obviously, it's not going to be the most supportive to hold. And since we're not going to have a bolstering notch here, the 10 and 2 itself doesn't feel the most confident inspiring. But again, this is a truck. I'm sure not 99% of you guys aren't going to be too focused on the steering wheel thickness. It is gonna be heated, the button's gonna be right here. We have a ton of controls. You can adjust the infotainment screen right here. Uh, you can go between the sources, between AM, FM, and whatnot. Call settings, voice commands, and you can adjust the infotainment screen here as well. Cruise control settings, we also have paddle shifters for this nine-speed transmission. They're not gonna be aluminum, but they do look like they have an aluminized little plastic look. I'll turn down this air settings by one so you guys can hear a little bit better. But as far as this horn, it's gonna be, uh, well, green material, it's not quite rubberized, but as far as the horn itself, really aggressive sound, so pretty loud horn. We have auto headlamp, headlamps, of course, auto high beams. As far as the infotainment adjustments, of course, we're gonna press these buttons right here. You can adjust between your trip information, fuel low, and oil life, tire pressure, compass, which also gives you turn by turn if navigation was hooked up, uh, but that's about it. You can also reset any information but we're gonna have to find a gas station soon because we are getting pretty low on gas. As far as these gauges though, we're gonna have a 6,700 RPM tachometer. So pretty high revving, naturally aspirated VTEC V6. Digital speedo in the middle. We're not gonna have any actual analog speedometers here for this display, uh, but not a big deal. You get your coolant temp on the right with the gas level right beneath it. Uh, but as far as these headlight or, um, well yeah, headlight stocks and turn signal stocks, very satisfying click one of the more satisfying ones in the business as far as the wiper stocks also super super nice we're not going to have any rain sensing wipers unfortunately but as the rain gets more aggressive you can simply pull these little latches back here to the left of the steering wheel here are going to be your four-way mirror controls econ mode you can turn off your parking sensors trash control lane departure warning forward collision assist i'm not quite sure what this wiper would do so let's press this button not quite sure. Okay, somebody leave it in the comment section what this button would do. Cargo lighting for the bed, your AC adapter as well. Uh, beneath that, we have our trunk release, electronic brake. You can get a good look at the pedals. Uh, the steering column is going to be tilt and telescope, and the adjustments are going to be right over here. As far as the dashboard, it's going to be a stitch material, not the softest, but it's definitely a soft touch. We have an additional speaker right on the sides with one in the middle as well. As far as this screen, I am liking how it's integrated into the dashboard, but given this slopey angle, it's going to be really tough to see when it gets sunny because of the glare. But we still get shortcuts on the side. You can go home. You can get a look at what the home screen would look like. We are going to get navigation. So let's press this button right here and check it out. So this screen is like out of the 2010s. Like, so very dated screen, guys. Uh, but it still does a job. It lets you know where the gas stations are. We're going to definitely need to know that pretty soon. Uh, it's pretty responsive. I'm not going to lie. It definitely responds to the fingers pretty well. It's just the resolution not quite the best but you guys can see everything that you can adjust here we have traffic we can go back home once it goes home <laughs> we have audio settings you can adjust the treble based on this eight speaker audio system uh but pretty nice we'll leave it in the map at all times for the purpose of this review beneath that we have the engine start stop button more of this plastic carbon fiber is trim dual zone auto climb control heated seats very good storage compartment here too you can probably stack two or three iphone 4 maxes on top of each other there wireless charging pad 12 volt and we get a usb port right next to it so pretty useful as far as the gear selector you push the button for park pull back for reverse push the button for neutral and you can push between drive and sport right over here this button activates your intelligent traction management you can adjust between normal snow mud and sand but we're not going to be taking this off road so we'll leave it in normal mode we can turn off the start stop too for the purpose of this review we will two cup holders not going to be rubberized but they do give you a pass through and i am liking the shape of the center area and this middle portion absolutely massive we're not going to get a true center console but this center console can fit a ton of stuff you're easily fitting like a 12 pack you probably fit a case if you take it out of the box really impressive we have a ziploc bag in there for some reason uh oh okay so this gives us like drain plugs or something pretty interesting uh, we have an additional 12 volt in here as well as an additional usb port so pretty spacious really spacious i fit my water bottle in there with no problem you can fit a bunch of stuff on the outsides of it too you can close it up right here and it shows you this pretty cool cool grained material not quite sure what it is but i am liking it and as we mentioned you can drop these little armrests right down for the driver it's pretty comfortable as far as the glove box we can pull this latch right here it's not going to be damped it's not gonna be Lionel Felt either. It's gonna be pretty small overall. And if you notice these buttons, we have our trunk lock button right over here. 
Uh, I'm, you might be able to fit a pair of shoes in this glove box. It'll be a tight squeeze. It might mess up the shape. I wouldn't expect you to fit more than 15 license plates. Up top, we have our auto dimming rear view mirror with three garage settings on them. You can open up your fifth window with this button right there. And it closes up too, of course. Uh, you get your interior lighting. You have your push and tilt for the sunroof, which is right over here. It's not gonna be a moonroof, but still a sunroof. It's nice to get. You press this button, it's gonna open up automatically and it goes into the roof and poking our way out of here it's a beautiful day right now in wesley chapel florida it's sunny and 75 it's just pretty windy it's going to affect the audio quality but i am going to get a new microphone or a microphone soon guys so expect some better audio quality in the near future but that's about it for this front seat guys let's hop out back and see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials all right guys stepping in the back seat of the 2022 ridgeline rtle up top everything is gonna be hard plastic to be expected even the accord touring had hard plastic for the upper portion down here same thing we have some stitch material for the armrest cup holder right here with a phone holder right next to it good resistance on the door handle no storage in the bottom portion unfortunately uh, we are going to get in another one of our eight speakers as far as these seats they're still going to be perforated leather seats uh, you can lift them up with this handle down here and it reveals a flat floor so you can throw some pillows down here for the night you can have a place to sleep if you need to in an emergency so pretty useful overall we can drop this thing right back and let's take a step inside and see how much space we have in this 2022 Ridgeline and I'm six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have a couple inches of room I have much more space than I would in the Toyota Tacoma maybe even more than the Nissan Frontier so this is pretty impressive back seat for what this vehicle is you sit really high up though I'm I'm my head's like almost in the ceiling and I feel like I'm significantly higher than where the front passengers would be sitting but not a big deal dual map pockets of course we have air vents back here too two USB ports beneath not quite sure if i can pick it up with this camera uh, but we do have them nevertheless as far as this little center cubby area you got to really jab our fingers and we do get a string but it was like jabbed in there so you could pull the string open it up we have a really large center area back here you can easily fit two arms a little pass through for your phone two cup holders not the deepest so that your drinks might be flying out an additional little coin tray back here we can shut this center console thingy up uh, we have our interior lights back here. Just push the buttons and they don't turn on for some reason. That's pretty interesting. Maybe that's what those buttons were up front. Not a big deal though. That's about it for this back seat, guys. Let's take this 2022 Ridgeline RTLE out for a drive. All right, guys. Now we just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE. Let's take it out for a drive. And first thing I notice is this, the push buttons for the gear selector. Definitely something to get used to, but once you put the car into drive, of course, it's just business as usual. And the throttle is very touchy. Honda and Acura have definitely been known for that over the years, having very sensitive throttles, but it also pulls. It doesn't just feel like it's sensitive off the line. It definitely feels like it can continue through. And we'll take a step over here onto this pretty curvy road, lead into it about a third of the way. Whew, good torque. Throwing it in. The steering has a little bit of play to it and not a lot of confidence because look at this body roll. Wow, that's a lot of body roll. Similar to the Pilot, the Pilot also has a lot of body roll and the steering has pretty significant play and we're not even going through those turns very quickly. But it's a truck, guys. What do you expect? You're not gonna be hammering it through the turns. It's still a very soft ride quality over the bumps. It feels fantastic. It's an independent rear suspension. So it's not going to have that jolt that you would from a lot of trucks in the segment. Uh, but just coming down, oof, okay, <laughs> just cruising along. Yeah, there is a little bit of play in the wheel. You can see you're not really changing directions very easily. Uh, just cruising along over here, very quiet, very limited wind noise and road noise. We're not going to have dual pane windows, but still very quiet. We do get the acoustic glass on the RTL trims on the Ridgeline, and this is the RTLE, so it's also going to be coming equipped with the acoustic glass. But all right, turning around over here, you can take a look at the turning radius on this truck. Wow, very impressive turning radius. And stepping back out, half throttle. Whew, strong. Yeah. And that's still just normal mode. We'll throw it in the sport and see what the differences are in one moment. Wow, good handling. I mean, not good handling, but it makes the turns pretty, pretty easily. 
you just have you're gonna have to get used to the body roll because there is gonna be pretty decent amount but it stays very composed you do feel the roll but it stays consistent similar to the crv and the pilot the crv had less body roll than the pilot of course but both vehicles still felt very smooth and consistent But all right, let's try out sport mode real quick. See what the differences are. The transmission immediately downshifts. The steering feels a tad bit heavier. Yeah, tad, not much. Wow, yeah, pretty impressive, guys. Not bad. All right, guys, let's try an acceleration off the line in this 2022 Ridgeline. Ooh, strong. Wow. Yeah, this thing can really pick up and go. I can definitely see 60 in seven to seven and a half seconds. Sharp turn. Wow, in sport mode, the steering being more on center and a little bit heavier definitely gives you more confidence through the turn. So the body roll really doesn't stick out as much. And I feel like the turn in is quicker in sport. So sport really does liven this truck up. The transmission is going to be the biggest difference, as you see, just cruising at like 3,000 RPM. It's not going to help your fuel economy so for the purposes of this review we'll finish it, we'll finish it off just in regular drive hope you guys get the point actually let's throw it back in the sport try out these paddles wow yeah pretty instant response from the paddles but obviously that's not going to be a main priority for a lot of you guys buying this 2022 ridgeline rtle third gear good torque wow Whew. Yeah, the pedal shifters definitely make it a little more fun, but we'll throw it right back into drive, head back over to Honda of Wesley Chapel. And again, huge thanks to them for making this review possible. If you're looking for a new car in the Florida area, Tampa area, I would definitely suggest checking these guys out. Overall though, I'm very impressed with this vehicle. It is a little bit pricey compared to vehicles like the Santa Cruz or the Ford Maverick, uh, but those vehicles are also a little bit smaller. This vehicle does offer a little bit more space this vehicle offers more space than what you would get in even the Tacoma or the uh, Frontier. And those vehicles are very large trucks. You're not gonna get anywhere near as good a fuel economy. The ride qualities are much more truck-ish in those vehicles. So compared to those like the Tacoma and the Frontier, I think this is a very good alternative. Compared to the Ford Maverick and the Santa Cruz, if you're looking for a very affordable way to just get into a vehicle with a bed, I would actually recommend the Ford Maverick because you can get one of those around 20,000 bucks if you want to go for a base model and a base model Ridgeline is going to be costing between 36 to 40,000 depending on the equipment. Uh, but if you're looking for an alternative to the Tacoma or the Frontier, I'd 100% suggest anybody cross shopping between mid-sized trucks to definitely put this one on your list. Other than that though, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe if you've already subscribed. Thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude for all the subscribers. You know, the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate all your constant support. Uh, but again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific vehicles you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope all you guys have a great day.